All right, so as our note packet says, since the flowing of electrons is electricity, a current, it makes sense to kind of link this redox stuff to electricity, since all of our redox reactions, of course, involve a transfer of electrons. So an electrochemical cell is a system of electrodes in which a chemical reaction, pretty much a redox reaction, will either use or generate an electric current. And there's two main types of these cells. First, we have our galvanic, galvanic or voltaic cell. And this is where we have a thermodynamically favored, spontaneous redox reaction that is going to generate an electric current. The opposite of that is an electrolytic cell. And this is where our cell will use an electric current to drive a non-thermodynamically favored, a non-spontaneous redox reaction. Now we're going to focus now on the voltaic cells, and we'll come back to electrolysis and whatnot later. But for both of these cells, we want to make sure we understand and recognize that at the anode, that's the electrode at which our oxidation is going to be occurring while well, the cathode is the electrode at which reduction is occurring. AP doesn't want us to have to determine what the charge of the anode and the cathode is. We just really want to remember that the anode is oxidation, the cathode reduction. The best way I've ever remembered that is because I match my vowels. Anode, oxidation, cathode, reduction. So match your consonants there. A and O, C and R. All right, so here is a diagram of said, uh, let me get rid of that, said galvanic cell. And it's the one you probably see the most often, if, even if you Google it. It's a zinc copper cell. And again, our anode is where the oxidation is occurring, and our cathode is where the reduction is occurring. And so what you end up having is a strip of metal dipped into a solution of its metal ions. So over here we see a zinc electrode and it's in a zinc sulfate solution. Over here we see a copper electrode in a copper sulfate solution. So you see we have two separate cells and as we'll be working with in the lab it can be beakers whatever and they are separated physically. However they are connected by that salt bridge that we've mentioned before. And remember that that is there to prevent the buildup of positive or negative charge in either one of the half cells once they are connected and electrons are flowing. If there was a buildup of positive or negative charge in the cell, then the cell would stop working. And there's a more detailed explanation of this on the Moodle site. You can click on it and it goes through a little more in-depth tutorial. So if you don't like what I'll do here in the next minute or so, you can always look into that. But essentially what's going on, at the anode we have oxidation. So zinc is losing two electrons and becoming the zinc ion. And so electrons are flowing that away. And so zinc ions are entering the solution as the electrons are being lost. Well, over on the other side, we're having our reduction. Copper ions from the solution are gaining those electrons and becoming our copper solid. So copper ions in the solution are building up on the copper electrode. So yes, during the running of the cell, the zinc electrode will actually get smaller and the copper electrode will actually get bigger and we'll be able to do some stoichiometry with that just to say how much later on. So what the salt bridge does then, let's say our salt bridge has um, potassium chloride in there. Well since the anode is building up with the zinc ions then the chloride ions would leave the salt bridge and start entering there to balance out that positive buildup. The zinc ions can also go up into the salt bridge. On the other side, we're losing all the copper ions from the solution, and so the potassium ions would go in there to replace the loss of the potassium. And yes, the sulfate from the solution could also go up into the salt bridge. 
So again, the salt bridge allows the exchange of ions while the electrons are traveling through the wire. Now, that's what the cell looks like. We can also have a cell notation. This is our shortcut, our most common, simplest version of a cell notation. You'll notice that we always start with the anode on the left and the cathode on the right. So we have our strip of zinc metal immersed into our zinc solution. So we have our aqueous zinc ions. And there's a single bar that separates the two phases. Then there's two bars, two lines, that represents the salt bridge. And that salt bridge is immersed in the copper solution. So we have our copper plus two aqueous, and then our copper electrode on the end. We can have a more complete version of that if we would include the actual molarities of the solutions. And so that's what the notation would look like there. As we've done a lot around here, we'll be calculating potentials of these cell and voltages and stuff, and we will be using standard potentials. And of course, our standard um, Sorry, our standard conditions tend to be 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin, one atmosphere of pressure, and for our solutions, one molar. So you'll most likely see a lot of one molar solutions with these cells. We can have gases involved, and if we do have gases involved, then you would see the pressure in the complete cell notation. A very common electrode is our Xi cathode, our standard hydrogen electrode. And so you can see our cell here has the same start on the left, our same anode with our zinc, zinc metal in our zinc nitrate solution. There's a salt bridge. And then over here we have hydrogen ions. So we have an acid, nitric acid, let's say. And the, it is being, the hydrogen ions are being reduced to hydrogen gas and this needs a platinum electrode, a surface catalyst, in order for this to happen. Had to pause to miss that announcement. But yes, we have a, typically it's platinum, it could be silver or gold, but it's usually always written as platinum, and we'll see it again in another couple instances where that inert metal is used as a cathode in order to have, to facilitate the reduction reaction. All right, so, you see a picture of a cell, you can write the notation, or from a notation you could draw or label a picture of a cell. You can also then figure out the overall cell reaction from either the picture or more typically from our cell uh, notation here. So here we have a cadmium electrode and hydrogen is being reduced uh, with the platinum electrode. And so I want to know the overall redox reaction. So I need to find the reduction half reaction and the oxidation half reaction and combine them, getting rid of the electrons. So the nice thing is, again, our cell notations always start with anode on the left. So the cadmium is losing two electrons, and that is my oxidation half reaction. Hydrogen ions are being reduced to hydrogen gas. Make sure it's balanced, so two hydrogen ions plus two electrons. And then I can simply cancel my two electrons and add these two reactions together to show the overall reaction of the cell. Same thing down here. Zinc is at the anode. Zinc is losing two electrons. And then here you see another example where Iron is not turning into solid iron, so we don't have an iron electrode. Iron 3 is just being reduced to iron 2, and that is happening in the presence of a platinum electrode. Now here, in order for me to combine these two reactions, I'm going to have to double the second reaction so that my electrons will cancel out. And when I do that, I end up with that overall reaction. So good luck with the practice problems where you're just labeling a couple cells and then coming up with these uh, complete cell reactions from the two half reactions and our cell notations. All right, see you soon.